did want to share, for starters, I found this little, this is um, in a book called Peace is Every Step by Thich Nhat Hanh, Han, and I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, so I apologize if I, if you know the, a better pronunciation, but it was called The Sun, The Sun, My Heart. So I just thought I'd share that as an inspiration. We know that if our heart stops beating, the flow of our life will stop. And so we cherish our heart very much. Yet we do not often take the time to notice that other things outside of our bodies are also essential for our survival. Look at the immense light we call the sun. If it were to stop shining, the flow of our life would also stop. So the sun is our second heart, a heart outside of our body. This immense heart gives all life on earth the warmth necessary for existence. Plants live thanks to the sun. Their leaves absorb the sun's energy along with carbon dioxide from the air to produce food for the tree, the flower, the plankton. And thanks to plants, we and other animals can live. All of us, people, animals, and plants consume the sun directly and indirectly. We cannot begin to describe all the effects of the sun that great heart outside of our body. Our body is not limited to what is inside the boundary of our skin. It is much more immense. It includes even the layer of air around our earth. For if the atmosphere were to disappear, even in an instant, our life would end. There is no phenomenon in the universe that does not intimately concern us from a pebble resting at the bottom of the ocean to the movement of a galaxy millions of light years away. Walt Whitman said, I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars. These words are not philosophy. They come from the depths of his soul. He said, I am large. I contain multitudes. So I thought that was just a beautiful homage to the sun and how it can, um, you know, how it supports us. And often we take it for granted. And when it's gone, we miss it. At least I do. I, I feel so, like I'm solar powered. <laughs> and it was funny because I was thinking about this sun because I was thinking about the inspiration for this. And this was one that I did from that book. And this was um, the, the sun as, as a heart. But I kind of like, you know, this idea um, for my son, I'm not going to make it a heart necessarily shape, I don't think, I mean, I could be inspired to do that, but just the flames coming around it, um, similar to my idea that I have. So, so I'm going to do the sun kind of coming this way. And then I was thinking I could have a quote, like, let the sun shine in or something about the sun on this side. So I'm going to leave this side a little open for that and then put my sun over here. That's where I'm that's where I'm headed. I pulled out my three brush, my three most favorite brushes that I tend to go to. It's my, uh, my number 10 Blick Master Sable, Kalinsky Sable. Uh, this is my eight Blick Master Sable. And then I have a, a squirrel number six. Now, as I've told you before, these numbers are based on brands so they're not necessarily going to be the same as your number six eight and ten but um you know just make sure that they correlate with the size of the paper that you're using and you should be fine and i don't know that i'll use all of them but i just have them handy just uh, to have kind of a range depending on the size of the shape that i'm going to be working on and um, i'm going to be using a mix of yellows and reds this is my color palette here so I'm just going to be probably going in with maybe this pyrrole red, it's a little bit warmer, and then some of these yellows to get variation and, and maybe even a little bit of ochre. I don't know. We'll see. So that's the color palette that I'll be working with. And I was thinking what might be fun also, and we'll see if I'm inspired to do that, but I do have these metallic paints um, that offer some, you know, shimmer there, they have mica powders in them. So I might incorporate those. I'm not sure, but I thought, you know, the vibrancy of the sun that might, that might work out. And I have my two clean water uh, jars. One I use for my dirty brush and one is my primary clean. Now I might zoom in for you, but I just wanted you to kind of see what I have around me. Um, to start with, just so you know, I have a little spritzer. I'm not sure if I'll use that, but I have it handy. 
And then I also pulled out a little Q-tip or a little cotton swab, because if I do want to lift those circles for the bokeh effect that I had talked about previously, I could use that to, to maybe do some lifting with. You can also use a little tissue or something like that, or even a, a clean brush. All right. I, I don't tend to like doing much drawing, um, but you could if you want to, and I you could use a watercolor pencil if you want. I'm just going to do kind of freestyle. And as I mentioned before, to before I start recording, the shape that I'm going to be using to make all of my little um, sun rays is going to be kind of like the petal of a flower. So I just wanted to demonstrate how that looks um, before, because it's, it's, it's a pretty, it, you know, it's pretty easy with the round brush to get this effect, but you know, it takes some, a little practice uh, to kind of get used to it. So I just thought I would demonstrate the, the, the stroke that it takes to do that. I'll do that with red so you guys can see it. But essentially, if you, um, cause I'm gonna be wanting to make it really narrow to start with and then get fatter and then thin out kind of like we do with a leaf. So the tip is really fine. So I can lightly draw that down. And then as I press down on my, the body of my brush, it creates a fatter part. And then as I lift slowly, it creates a tail. So this is basically how I'm going to be creating these rays. I'm just gonna wiggle as I go. So instead of, well, sometimes I'm gonna go straight and sometimes I'm going to do a wiggle. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna press and then do like a little bit of a wiggle and then lift slowly. And then I get a little bit of a wiggly ray. So I'm gonna be just repeating this basic type. I'm gonna go different lengths. So I might do a short one that's just press and lift. And I might do a longer one. So basically that's how I'm going to be working on my rays.
so maybe it'd be fun to do another sun. What do you think, guys? Are you up for another sun? <laughs> I'm in. I was thinking about the one that um, this photo. So it's kind of orange with these little rings and things and kind of like that bokeh effect. So, and you can kind of see the rays coming out lighter. So I might try something like that. See if I can get something like that to work. So I'm going to want kind of a darker background. I want it lighter where the sun's going to be. I'm gonna make the sun here. Um, now I was gonna use that cork, but I'm realizing it's kind of small for how big I want the sun to be. So I'm going to see if I have something um, bigger. Maybe like a container of some kind. And I think I'm just going to start with doing an overall kind of maybe this using this orange color. Maybe just doing a wash of that. But I need, I think I'm going to need more. So I'm just going to mix up some more of that. And I feel like this, this line over here, this is, I like this softer line. So I'm gonna see if I can loosen some of this up, just soften these lines just by reactivating some of that pigment. Now this is just a, basically a clean damp brush. Just trying to see if I can break up some of that line. That's better. I like that better. Just not so harsh.
All right, that's kind of fun. That's not exactly what I imagined, but you know, you never know with watercolor. You just don't know. These rings kind of didn't, um, I ended up scraping the paper a little bit. So it ended up filling the pigment into them instead of making them light in some areas. So <laughs> that was definitely a different effect that I wasn't going for, but it's kind of an interesting, some interesting character over in this area. I don't know if I, I don't know if the story of that's really explained. <laughs> it doesn't really, it does, doesn't really um, do anything, I don't think, for the piece. So I could try to soften just whatever it is that's going on over there, see if I can reset it a little bit. Let's try that. I don't know. Well, it's not really, it's not really standing out like what I wanted. Um, part of that I think is just because I, the sun is too far over. I could have made it bigger and then I'd have more room to work on that, but I'm just going to go this way and try to make some rays kind of coming out there. See if I can just kind of blend it with the rest of it. So it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it does look a little bit more, more opaque. If you didn't reserve white, you can, you know, try to bring some of that back by using the white or the white gouache. So it did, you know, lighten it a little bit. But um, it does have a different look than the other areas. So my rule of thumb is if it's possible to use the white of the page with regular watercolor, that's my first go-to. Adding white back in can be challenging. You can lift the pigment, which can be challenging depending on the paper that you have and the colors you have. Like I showed you when it was already dry, that red really is a staining red. And it was hard to lift the color of the pigment. Now, while it's still wet, I got a lot of lifting and it worked really nicely, but it didn't lift completely. It's not completely white. It's still a little bit yellow, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, some colors lift better. Timing is, you know, timing is important, but um, the main thing is to experiment. And when I post the picture, you can see it, it just, it just looks a little different than the rest of it, it than the other areas that are white. So I think that's fun. I think that would be a fun, I could do, you know, um, I could do a little message over here, but I'm going to go ahead and pause and let's do some show and tell, and um, I can answer any additional questions. So let me go ahead and stop. The Thank you so much for watching. And as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, and hit the bell if you want to be notified for new videos. Take care and as always, happy creating. Bye.